outlet for you, give you an alternative route. That is the first stage of taqwa. The second stage of taqwa is to speak the truth and say to Allah, if I'm killed for it, I'll be considering that as an honor for me. To speak the truth. And if sustenance is cut short, to smile and say, oh Allah, it is so worth it that for your sake, my worldly sustenance has come to an end. Because the only one I want is you. I don't want an alternative route towards this dunya. In your presence, I am doing this in order to attain you yourself. So taqwa in the second sense means proactively increasing the presence of God, not wanting anything other, other than God from God. This is the meaning Imam Hussein displayed on the plains of Karbala on the day of Ashura. He, he saw bloodthirsty swords. He did not surrender to the demands of his adversaries, maintaining his own moral status and standards, maintaining his commitment to God and the community. Now at that point, Hussein cries out. He doesn't say to Allah, make an alternative route for me to escape. No. He says, oh, bloodthirsty swords, if you will not rest, save by consuming me, then await not. Come and tear me into pieces. That is the second level of taqwa. And if we look at the Quran carefully, in that verse, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, we have created you from a man and from a woman, made you into tribes and nations and differing languages, so that you may, through mutual interaction, come to know that all of these things are arbitrary. The only one thing that matters in essence is that the most noble amongst you is atqaqum, the one who is most not God-fearing, but one who is most God-conscious. The one who has invited God's presence in a most brilliant manner. I, in other words, who have become most godly. Now, if you look at this particular meaning, the prophet was asked, what is the best way to be? He said, be in a state of ihsan. They said, Ya Rasulullah, well, what is ihsan? He said, ihsan is to stand before God in a way that you know that God is in front of you. And if you cannot feel the presence of God, then at least to conceptually imagine that God is watching over you. This is opposed to doing justice. Justice means giving everything its rightful due. Now, when we approach God to give God his rightful due is, well, God, I'm obedient to you. I'm not doing anything which is inconsistent with your pleasure and your sharia. That is justice. But ihsan means to actually beautify for the sake of God above and beyond the dictates of justice. It is like being in love, extremely deeply in love with somebody. And then committing a service for them. We will not only suffice with doing that which is just and right. We will go out of our way to beautify that act. When we write a card, we will embellish it with beautiful sketches, lovely words. We might even perfume it. To beautify the soul through the presence of God. It's like a person cooking food. You can cook good food and feed your family. Get the ingredients right. The taste absolutely optimal. On the other hand, the same food can be prepared, maybe slightly compromised on the form, but the loving intention comes with the cooking. To do it with that eagerness of feeding the ones that you love in the best possible way. Here, the lack in the form of the food, i.e. lack of certain ingredients, will be more than compensated for by the beautification that it receives through that wonderful, sincere, pure, loving intention. It beautifies everything. 
I think in that way, the prophet or Imam Ali said, he said, a speech that comes from the heart strikes the heart. And no matter how eloquent the speech may be, if it emanates from the tip of the tongue, it fails to cross the eardrum. It is all to do with the inner world of the presence of God and beautifying ourselves for God. That's why when the two sons of Adam, they offered their sacrifices to God, Allah accepts from one and not from the other. The verse says that Abel said to Cain, Innama yataqabbal Allah min al muttaqin Allah accepts from those who are muttaqin. Here, muttaqin does not mean those who guard. No. Here, muttaqin means those who go out of their way to beautify their actions for God by understanding God and through His deep-seated presence within the soul. So taqwa at a loftier level means inviting the presence of God and beautifying our acts for the sake of God. I feel this is what Imam Ali was saying in his uh, sort of instructions when he said, when you work for the hereafter, for example, you feel that you are praying these lower prayers for your hereafter. He said, when you work for your hereafter, imagine that you're going to die after that deed so that you will put your all into that deed. Now, putting your all in that deed does not only mean getting the postures right. It means having utmost surrender, utmost commitment to that deed to make it into the most beautiful deed you have ever performed with utmost sincerity, beautifying it through and through. And Imam Ali said, when you work for your world, commit yourself to that act as if death will never come to you. Imagine when we are doing something for this world of ours, if we think, well, I'm going to die in a day or a year or something, we will not put our all in there when we initiate a business or when we plant a seed or a tree. Imam says here, beautify the act as if you are going to live forever and therefore in accordance with that the act should be resembling that commitment of yours that it will benefit me for the rest of my life till the day of Qiyamah. This notion of beautification, beautifying is something that seems to be akin to the meaning of taqwa, not guarding but embellishing, beautifying, doing things optimally in a most perfect way by the input of that intention that I act now, conduct myself now and commit myself in the presence of my beloved. And it is worthy that the beloved gets the best of whatever I have to offer. Every small deed in this way becomes a deed acceptable by God and acceptance of God means the emergence of the light of God. Imam Ali has said, no, the Prophet has said, a small deed committed through taqwa is not a small deed. It's a phenomenally huge deed. Great many deeds without that taqwa inside it mean very little. Here, taqwa can only mean a state of God presence and God centered state and a commitment to do something in the most beautiful way for the beloved. So, taqwa has two meanings one is to guard against the displeasure of God and to guard against whatever is unbefitting at the level of our human existence through the notion that God is watching over us. The other meaning of taqwa means inviting the presence of God and committing every act for the one whom we are in love with to an intimate and an intense extent that we want to offer our best at every instance. 
I will leave it at that. Uh, wassalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh.